But for now, as you can tell, I'm uh, delighted to welcome both Vicky Robinson and Tim Molinar. And Tim, can I start with you? You've uh, been off, I believe, with a shoulder injury. How close are we to returning to the fray? Um, like, yeah, it's pretty close now. Sort of trying uh, training, uh, get into a bit of contact and that. I tried to come back for a Monday night game a couple of weeks ago, but failed. <laughs> Um, so uh, hopefully in the next sort of one to two weeks we should be coming back, um, but we'll find out during training time really. Well that's good news. Since you've been here which, uh, into your second season now, you've um, endeared yourself to the fans, probably with your direct running style, but can I take you back uh, a little way? How easy was it decision-wise to join Gloucester? And now you can look back a season in a bit. Good decision for both you and your career? Yeah, I mean, for me it was it was a hard decision because I'm not, not the youngest guy around in, in terms of rugby. Um, and uh, I had a fairly good contract where I was at Nottingham. Uh, good lads, been there for a few years, and I'm, I'm not the sort of person that likes to change clubs too often. Um, stay with, the, with what, what I know. Um, but, you know, making the move, it was a big decision because was, this is such a massive club and um, you know, luckily for me last year, unfortunately for Mikey, he was injured all the, for pretty much the whole season so that gave me a bit of an opening and um, you know, for me it worked out quite well and I, you know, I'd never go back on the decision of moving, that's for sure. Thanks for that. Nicky, you've been here much the same length of time. I can't help but think that when you were lining up with Cardiff in that Twickenham final when you destroyed and perhaps humiliated Gloucester, you thought, um, what in the hell have I done? But are we now at a point where you see Gloucester emerging as the successful team you hoped they would be when you signed? I, I'm not sure if emerging is the right word. I think, um, obviously when I... I joined or I signed to, to come here. Gloucester was sitting top of the Premiership and uh, Goku won in Europe and, and obviously in the semi final of um, the uh, LV Cup or whatever it was called then. Um, so obviously the things are going well. It's only that um, they are a, a difficult end to the season. Um, and I think as a, as a club, it, it took a, as a player, I think it took a long time to get back from that. We didn't realise how much that turmoil of the summer of losing a coach and losing about 12 or 13 players over that summer. Um, really affected us and I think it took us a while to come, come back from that last year. I think it probably wasn't until Christmas actually we really started to find some fault. Um, but I think with, with the start we had it was always going to be difficult um, to get back to where we wanted to be. Um, obviously this year we started a lot more positively um, and got some good wins, possibly without, without performances. But um, I think we definitely feel as a, as a club that, um, as we did last year, I think that we had the strength to really compete and be a, a top four side in, in, in the Aviva Premiership. Which is good, so obviously not too bad a decision to sign then. Today we've got Saracens in the LB Cup, if I can ask you Tim, strange uh, quirk of the fixture list that we've got them home today, home in the Premiership in a couple of weeks. Can either side gain any sort of advantage from today's match, whether it be psychologically or, or whatever really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, uh, we we don't lose. We're not going to lose at home. That was, that's been our, our print since uh, I think it was November or sometime last year. Um, and it's for us, we just we cannot lose at home, whether it's LV, whether it's Amman or, or in the Premiership. So, you know, if, uh, if Saracens do come, come away with it today, you know, that would be a massive psychological thing. But I think, you know, the boys, the boys are set. We, you know, we're uh, we're pretty confident, and you know, for us, it's a must-win, really. That's good to hear, Vicky. Is that a reason that perhaps at this stage I ought to tell everyone that unfortunately overnight um, Alex Brown has uh, fallen ill, and he's been replaced by Peter Buxton. But this not losing at home, plus the fact that we obviously want to make a mark on the LB again. Is that the reason why such a strong team has been selected today? Yeah, I think the home form is a massive thing. We, we really want to keep that record going. We're really proud of, um, of our record. We're really disappointed when we lost a couple of times last year. We're really proud of what we've achieved uh, 
achieved so far this year. Um, and obviously, more than that, I think we're really disappointed with what happened at the Dragons game. Um, I think a lot of players um, uh, were really disappointed with the way they performed, and, and obviously, to lose that game. We got to the final of the LB last year, and, and it was a target of ours to win it this year. Um, so, we need to really win um, today to put us back in the frame to, to have an opportunity to get through to the semis. One question I must ask you, last year in the final against Northampton, perhaps a whole match swung on your disallowed try. Did you score? Yes. <laughs> I know that, and the Northampton number eight also knows that, because he told me straight afterwards there was a try, but unfortunately no one else could see it, and obviously it goes down as a, as a no try, and it was obviously quite a crucial point in the game, and um, I, mean, I suppose that maybe summed up our season a bit last year. True, yes. Um, Tim, next week, Newcastle. Again, perhaps we're slightly unfortunate that we've got matches against Newcastle and Saracens coming up in the Premiership, neither of which are adversely affected by international call-ups. Newcastle, people keep saying it's a tough place to go, but surely if you want to be a top four side you win at newcastle and london irish and saracens in the top four at the moment to prove that already this season difficult for gloucester next week but a match that we should win yeah th this is definitely one of the games that we're you know we're targeting we we, we need you need to win away games um to be anywhere near the top four in the premiership and you know, whether we're traveling to two seven hours this these, this technically is a, it's a bottom four team, and um, you know, we're definitely going up there. We're, we're pretty disappointed, and, and you know we sort of get a reputation of not being mentally strong enough to win away from home. And uh, for us, this is a massive statement. We, we went up there last last year and, and sort of disgraced ourselves a little bit when we lost. Um, so you know we're going to we're going up there to redeem ourselves and, and try and build this reputation that that Gloss is going to win no matter where they are. Because Nicky, this. Um Two matches in the Premiership and then Northampton on Boxing Day. Turn of the year, Gloucester could be in a fairly strong position if they can turn those into, say, even 12 points. No, I agree. We've had a look as a squad and targeted the next four games. Uh, we obviously Saracen's home and then we've got away trips to Sale um, and Newcastle and then also Leeds and Exeter as well to come shortly after that. So. We know that if we want to be, as Tim said, a top four side, you've got to go to places like Sale and Newcastle and pick up wins, otherwise you're then banking on getting wins at tough, slightly tougher places. So we know we've made a good start, but um, to keep that start going, we know we've got to put in some really good performances and probably play, play a lot better than we have done so far this year. Well, we'll all be rooting for you, you can be assured of that. Can I just quickly touch on the international scene, and I've probably got the two right sort of blokes here that um, World Cup coming up next year. Tim, I should probably ask you, is it a foregone conclusion that the Southern Hemisphere team is going to win that? And Nicky, I could probably ask you, Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland, are they showing anything that suggests they could be anything but bit part players next year? Let's start with you. I think it's, it's quite early to make any and assumptions about the teams not performing. And if you look at the way England went into the last World Cup, no one gives up, gave them a chance and they ended up getting to the final. So I think that um, those four teams will have a massive part to play in the outcome of the World Cup. Um, Wales, I think, is struggling slightly with injuries at the moment. Um, but I think that they've got the players that can really make an impact. Um, it's going to be so hard to, to play teams like New Zealand in their own backyard. But and we all know that the amount of pressure is going to be on them. Um, South Africa are looking strong and they'll always be there. And I think, obviously, the, the, the team that probably looking the strongest is Australia with the attacking flair that they've got. Um, they're going to be really difficult. But obviously, they're, they're struggling up front as well. So I think it's, um, obviously, New Zealand are probably out of their themselves at the moment, but it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to see who makes that kind of late charge, especially see some form during the Six Nations as well. I think we can be able to tell a bit more when that, when that competition starts. Jim, Nicky says New Zealand out there on their own. Is that a situation that you feel will still be exactly the same come the World Cup? The push, uh, the push to the World Cup is, uh, is completely different. I mean, New Zealand's been 
technically been out there on their own for the last two World Cups and you know, last the last one they didn't even make the series really. So it's, it's if there's ever a time for New Zealand to win, it's while they're playing in their own country. But uh, again, there's never been more pressure on them. Um, so for them, it's going to be you know this, this, it's massive, it's make or break it, as, as far as that. Um, Australia, that they're, they're, they're coming forwards. They've got young players, they're developing players. You're watching them on this on the tour they're on at the moment. You know they they're a strong side. It's uh, I mean New Zealand. You never know if it's a fine day, it could be hard to beat. But the weather and, and the time that the World Cup's on, England uh, England are definitely up there. That's for sure. Good to hear also, and good luck to all the countries. Time is. Uh caught up with us, but Nicky, I've got to ask you one question. Every time I turn S4C rugby on, I, I get Nicky Robinson, don't understand a single word you're saying. But is, this, um, is this work you really enjoy, and is this um, the plans for when rugby is finished as a career? Yeah, I had a couple of tweets actually. I'm on Twitter, and after the, during the game, uh, the Dragons game, which I was down, I had a couple of tweets that apparently I was looking good anyway, but nobody understand what I was saying anyway. So probably, probably the best thing. But um, I do really enjoy it's something I've been doing for a few years. Obviously, been a while speaker and living in well. Um, be doing a bit on TV, and I, I do really enjoy going out and, and trying to do with analysis and, and give my point of view on my expertise, I guess. Um, or lack of possibly on the scrum game and things like that. Um, but no, I enjoy it and it's something I'd like to carry on. Um, I'm doing a game on Sunday actually, down uh, um, ski, so uh, I do enjoy doing it and, and it's obviously something else, uh, another strip to my bow, I guess. Well, we wish you luck in that. And, uh, just uh, so you know that uh, the S4C match tomorrow is London Irish against the Scarlets, but there is an English option. Take it. <laughs> But I'm sure, Nicky, you talk a lot of sense, far more than Stuart Barnes ever does, but we, we will never know. And as I say, time was caught up with us. Can I thank you both for your time and uh, hope uh, if one or two of the youngsters want an autograph, you'll just hang around for a minute or two. Can I thank Nicky Robinson and Tim Molinari? Thank you very much.